Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood. Ha. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs as we finish up. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 6. God didn't put a twist on this. If you wasn't here last week, I want to encourage you to go to the well page, uh, Going Hall for Christ, and friend us on YouTube. Uh, and every time the sermons is put up, it will send you a notice of whatever sermon was preached on Sundays or Wednesday or whoever was preaching, my God, and I ask that you go and subscribe to be one of our followers. You never know when you're going to have to pull back and reach back in the archive and get a word that's going to help you. So please go to YouTube, mm. search for Going All for Christ Church, subscribe, and therefore you and ever Minister Jakari and the media team <clears throat> that's connected to Going All for Christ, uh, upload all of the videos, anything that's going on in the ministry, you would have access to it, and then you could take it and share it with your loved ones. And so we're going to continue where we left off on last week. I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 6. Let's see what the wisest man that ever lived has to say. Chapter 6, starting at verse 6. When you have it, please say amen. amen. And the word of God reads from the new living. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Lord, I don't like to use that word. but Learn, Solomon says, from their ways. Man, Solomon's great. He said, look at an ant, a little bitty ant. And you human beings who can crush an ant need to learn something from them. <laughs> you can put an ant in your hand, bury it, and squeeze it, and kill it. But Solomon says there's a whole lot of life lessons, spiritually and naturally, that you can learn from something that's little. Oh, let me put some scripture on that, baby. It says, don't despise small things. Oh, I'm loaded. Y'all better stay with me. He, my God. Mm. You can learn their way. Learn, learn from their ways and become wise. My God, verse 7 says, Though they have no prince or no governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer. Yeah, while we trying to be cute and cool, they getting it in. They gather food for the winter. They thinking like leaders. They know hard times and the inclements is going to, or the weather's going to change. So, my God, while I got an opportunity to store up, my God, I better take advantage of it because in the wintertime, I'm not going to be able to operate. Ah, oh, my God, are you wasting time? Are you taking for granted, my God, the seasons? Are you taking for granted the opportunities that you have to position yourself for your future? They said in the summer, the scripture said, they are storing up their food for the winter. They're not taking the summer to be cute and cool. They're taking the summer to get prepared for the winter. <laughs> oh, we can learn something from the small creature called the ant. But you, chew, but you, verse 9 says, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? It's not talking about natural sleep, spiritual sleep. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber. It's a combination of both. A little folding of the hands to rest. And then Solomon says, then poverty will soon pounce on you like a bandit. Father God, thank you for this time to deal with these Augustine of believers. Thank you for the body of Christ. Lord, as you spoke in my spirit this morning at five or so, that I get the privilege to serve the people today. That's all a pastor is, is the chief servant. So I thank you that I get to be the chief servant to the people. Save somebody's soul. Somebody is not saved. Yes. I've already surveyed the audience and know about a spirit. Everybody ain't rooted and connected in you. Show yourself mighty today. You said if you be lifted up like we just did, you will draw all men to you. We lift you up today. You draw and say, in Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Again, I want to instruct you to go to YouTube, my God, and you can look at part one from last Sunday of this continuation. And so I'm going to move forward and jump right on into it. In this passage, as I said last week, my God, which concerns the little ant church, God is speaking really in context to the sluggard. That means the lazy person, the person that's always making excuses. As I told you, it's always somebody else's fault. Oh, my God, this is my plot in life. My God, what nobody, did nobody in my family graduate, so I guess I don't have to graduate. My God, I don't have any business owners in my family, so why should I try to be a business owner? Come on, somebody, just, just sluggard, just lazy. My God, and usually that's birthed out of the environment that many of us grow up in. Just because you grow up in a tough environment like many of us has, don't mean you have to become like your environment. Right. 
If you have the power of God living on the inside of you, you have the power and the authority, my God, to make a difference. You don't have to become or be like the environment. Ah, my God, be a trendsetter for real. Just because your other family members went through that don't mean you have to go through it. Mm -hmm. And so, 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 speaking in context, my God is dealing with the slugger. This refers, as I told you, to, to those who are lazy, idle, and curlless. Lazy, idle, and curlless. If that's you, that should not be associated with your character as a believer of Christ. You shouldn't be lazy. You shouldn't be idle. My God, you shouldn't be curlless. And my God, we don't want to be the people that sticks to nothing. My God, these are lazy people. They stick to nothing. They start real well, but they don't finish real strong. They talk real good, my God, but then you look at their life, it don't match the talk, my God, because they don't stick to nothing. As I told you, I believe there's much that we can learn from this ant. My God, well, what we will learn from these tiny creatures can help us become better Christians, my God, they can help the church be effective. Don't you know that when God put a, a belief, put believers together, He strategically, as me and Oliver went to uh, went uh, to watch his son uh, play in Kansas uh, uh, Friday, my God, and uh, He said, Pastor, I remember when you talked about God is like a master chess player. Uh, you think about chess for those that play chess, or uh, even if those that play checkers or whatever, my God, uh, God has to move things. He has to shift things. Uh, uh, he has to move this person and then train this person so they can get their job because that's going to be the person that's going to give you the promotion. I have to, he, has, he, has, he has to wait some time. My God, that's why it takes faith and patience to do the will of the Father. My God, because God has to get people in place. Because God uses people to execute his will. Come on, I said, God, Brandon, use people to execute his will. And so, therefore, when you and I get impatient with the will of the Father in your life, then you start trying to create Ishmael's. Come on, Abraham. You start trying to make something happen on your own. And now you're trying to open up a door that you don't have a key to. And now you're sitting up here frustrated. Now you're sitting up here bitter because you got the wrong key and you're trying to access something that you don't have a key to access and now you're frustrated. If God said if you'd have just waited if you'd have just been patient, my God I would have opened up that door for you. You wouldn't even need a key. My God, because when you're in God's will, the safest place is in his will so when you're in God's will, when you just walk up to the door, Jackie's automatic access you don't have to open up nothing to open up for you I can't get nobody to say nothing right there who somebody give God a hand hey, hey my God, hey Jesus and so we're going to move right on my God, to be. The ant work is productive. Last week I told you ants work as a partner. They're a team. They're my God, teamwork. But we're going to deal with the productivity of the ants. Ants are very productive. I was studying, my God, over the weekend, my God, looking at the ants. First lady gave me some uh, uh, how to research it because I asked her, you know, because she's so bright and intelligent. And so I need to access that key. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. So therefore I begin to, to read, my God, and, and look at this ant. And the ant, my God, is a, is a very interesting Pastor Tedrick creature. I remember years ago I I heard TDJs talk about the ant. And I said, one day, my God, I wasn't even pastoring, but I said, one day, I would like to be able to preach that. Well, guess what? The time came last week, my God, and I started researching and studying, and I found out, my God, this little bitty creature has a lot of principles that we need as human beings. Yeah. That little bitty creature that get on your nerve yeah. has so many principles. Sometimes, sometimes when you go home and you see some ants, don't, don't kill them. Just sit back and watch them so you can learn something. I can't. <laughs> Just learn a little bit about it because they're they, they, they very productive. My God, I promise you, if you watch them, you'll be like, that little cunny, crafty sucker. How did he get that? But, what, but, but, but if you really study them, they're going to convict you because they ain't lazy. They ain't making no excuses. They ain't saying I'm too little. They're not saying ain't nobody open up the door for me. Uh, nobody gave me a chance. See, they, they make their own way. <laughs> oh, they, they create their own way. Come on, somebody. And so you got to be like that because you have the power to do that. My God, you can create your own way in life. Yeah. Oh, just because it happened to Joe Blow don't mean it's going to happen to you. Just because that's what they went through don't mean you got to go through it. Mm. So let's look at their productivity. Write this down, sir, point up, other point, number B. Ants have a volunteer team. Now, as I taught y'all last week, my God, to really follow me, you have to go back and look at last week on YouTube, my God. But they, the ant have a colony. Uh, and, and they don't have just no one leader, <laughs> oh, my God, that helps take care of the colony. They have an all-volunteer team. Oh, we don't want to hear that. If you want me to vacuum, you need to pay me. If I'm going to clean some bathrooms, you need to pay me. See, 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 that's the wrong heart. That's a, that's, that's, that's a sheep with a goat attitude and a goat mindset. Don't you know you can be sheep with a goat mindset? 
Oh, yeah, just do them, just read the scripture. But they have an all volunteer team that have no guy. Yet each ant works, each ant in a colony. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but I failed one time at Johnsboro Elementary, Felicia. I failed. You remember we used to have them ant things out there on the playground. I failed in one one time because I was always out there in the field. My guy playing football and stuff, and I failed, and it got inside my pants. So with your grandmas and mamas, you got ants in your pants. So they got all in me, and I started dancing and moving around. And I went to the office. They took all my clothes off, and I just stayed up the street. So my grandma had to meet me halfway, and we went up in the office, and I got out of all my clothes and put on some new clothes, and she sent me right back to school. But I had had ants in my pants. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing because there's so many of them. You may see four or five ants on the outside of a colony, but inside, there, there's thousands. Mm. I said, you may see four or five of them outside working and, and getting it in and putting in work and volunteering. My God, bringing food back to feed their sister, bringing food back to feed their brothers. My God, bringing food back to feed their battle partners. Come on, somebody. But if you fall inside that ant hole, my God, you lay down in that ant hole, you'll be like, where did all these ants come from? Because there's hundreds of thousands of them inside of a colony I got with me so far but every one of them ants my God has a purpose what am I trying to say you are part of the body if you're a member of this family not church because we don't do church we do Christ and you are part of the body of Christ come on somebody now my God you should be productive oh my God you got to get to the point where you get past uh, of being a taker you got many people sitting around a whole lot of churches all around the nation, my God, and what they, what they call, they call takers. They take, take, take. They don't ever feed, feed, feed nothing. Oh, my God, but sooner or later, you got to feed what's feeding you, baby. If the church is feeding your soul and the church is feeding your children, you ought to be willing to be a blessing to the church. You ought to be willing to come up and serve. You ought to be willing to come up and vacuum. God. Pastor, what can I do, my God? This church is, I'm in between jobs right now. I'll come up there and clean. I'll come up there and wipe the windows down. I'll come up there and help you good as you, much as, what we getting? We getting five-star meals, Barry, this church coming across this pool pit. My God, my God, but what are you giving back to the ministry? What are you giving back to what's feeding you? That's very, very important. What are you giving back to God? We want everything from God, but we won't give God what belongs to him. Like love, right? like forgiveness, like 10%. He don't need your money, but he needs your heart. Give God your heart back. Oh, my God, we got to go a little deeper because I feel y'all kind of, uh, somebody, come on. And so there are thousands, and thousands that may dwell in one ant colony. But every one of the ant, my God, pulls its own weight. They work, y'all. Ants work. Look at your neighbor and say, work. Oh, I'm sorry, because some of y'all didn't look because he ain't working. <laughs> she ain't working. But see, if you're not working, I'm not going to give you no excuse because there's such thing as called the three T's. Time, talent, and treasure. So if, 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 I can't, if I can't financially be a blessing to the body, then I can come up here and offer some time. Yeah. I can come up here, my God, and offer my talents, my gifts. Yeah. I don't know what I'm called to do. Well, I can find you something to do inside of a church 13, I mean 30-some thousand square feet. Come on, somebody. I can find you plenty to do. So if you're in between jobs, I'm not going to give you an excuse not to do anything. Right. Well, Pastor, I'm struggling, my God. Well, it's a whole lot of us struggling. See what I'm trying to say? There's a whole lot of us, my God. I'm not just stop talking about struggling just financially. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about struggling and battling the areas of our life. Quit disqualifying yourself. Oh, my God, because when you get around some people that's free, and my God, and overcame what you are struggling with, that's a person that can help you get free from what you're struggling with, my God. I said, if you come up here and get around people that's free, let me help you, let me help you, because y'all ain't with me. My God, give me some volume up there, son. If you get around people, my God, that is free from the very thing that you are struggling with, when you get around them, my God, you, always, you can receive a key to to unlock, my God, that which you're struggling with. They may say something, my God, that may help you. They may give you a strategy. They may give you a word, my God, that can help you get free. That's why you need each other to survive. Yeah, yeah. That's why you got to be around your sisters and brothers. You see the headline of the sermon, I need you to survive. Michelle going over Christ needs you. My God, one of the God going over Christ needs you. I told y'all that last week. You need your brothers and you need your sisters. Ants work together as a team. They have an all volunteer team. Volunteer team. They ain't, ain't nobody getting paid, Scooter. If anybody wanted to get paid, they would starve to death. Because guess what? They ain't getting no money to go to Walmart to buy no food. Are y'all with me so far? Mm, yes, Lord. A solidarity ant, let me give you this. A solidarity ant kills all the ants who refuse to work. See, you got different type of ants. In my study, you got different type of ants. And so, therefore, a solidarity ant will kill all the other ants that's not productive. Oh, you're in the way. You get crushed. I said a solidarity ant will kill all the other ants that's not productive. 
when you get wounded in the jungle if you're an animal. You're done. When you can no longer think the Holy Ghost carry your weight, you're done. When you have lost your way, my God, and you ain't willing to find your way, key word, lost your way, and not willing to repent to find your way, you're done. Yeah. Oh, my God, I better stay up because y'all know if I come down, it's on. See what I'm trying to say? Oh, my God. So if you have lost your way today and you don't know Christ, if you have been in Christ, you're wounded, affected, whatever, and you're not willing to repent, you're not willing to honor, I mean, I mean to acknowledge, my God, what you're struggling with, you're done. You're just existing. And you're waiting for the enemy to truly take you out. Because guess what? The enemy prey on those who are wounded. The enemy prey on our ignorance. Vo ignorance is another word for void of darkness, void of understanding. My God. Come on, if you got a whole lot of darkness in you, void of understanding, and you're not willing to repent, you're not willing to acknowledge, my God, that you're stuck and that you're wounded, that you're hurting, my God. It's just a matter of time for you to be done. Some people die quicker than others, but they die spiritually. And so when you're not working, they kill you. Now, I'm not telling y'all to kill nobody around here because that case, we'd be in trouble because there's a whole lot of you ain't doing nothing. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it's tight, but it's right. Yeah. I don't want to kill you. I don't have that heart. I'm going to work with you and be patient until you catch on fire. My God, according to James chapter 2, 17 and 18, write this down, down please, James chapter 2. Well, we're talking about an all-volunteer team. When you don't volunteer uh, to my department coordinators, I gave you some ammunition. I'm going to let you do it. I ain't going to mess with it. But I gave all my department coordinators, Mama Donna and all y'all, uh, my God, hospitality. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you're going to be a part of the team, you're going to work. If not, you can go and sit on down and enjoy the service. I'm sorry, but over here, we are productive. Over here, we feed what's feeding us. Over here, we are a team. Over here, we need each other to survive. Over here, according to the Bible, my God, my God, that, we, that, 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 that two is better than one. Come on, somebody. Uh, are you with me so far? The Bible says, my God, that the second greatest command is to love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, don't be a part of a team. Don't be a part of an auxiliary. Don't say you're part of the church family. <laughs> oh, but you're not concerned about nobody in the family. Oh, my God. Don't say you're part of this family and you don't care what the church look like. You don't care what's going on in somebody else's life. My God, I question your love walk when if you feel like that. If you don't care about nobody else hurting. If you don't care about carrying your load. That you are so content with just coming and receiving and then buy a check off that I came to church and I'm going about my business. I don't care about nothing else. I don't care about no, nobody else but my foe and no more. Ask God can he deal with that? Ask God, is that his heart? Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. So is that God's mind? So is it possible that we're hindering and holding up the heavens from being open above our life because the attitude is out of order? If you're sitting here and you're part of the family, if you don't go to this church and you go to another church, my God, and you're not offering your gift and you're not being productive to the body, come on, Jesus said, either you for me or you against me. Oh, my God, either you adding to the kingdom or you taking away from the kingdom. So I'm giving you all Bible, baby. I'm not giving you my opinion. This is Bible. That's why you got to read it so you can understand me. Either you adding to God's kingdom or you are taking away. Either you for God or you against God. Because you come to church don't mean you for God. Because you're sitting up off and even if you gave God $2, don't mean you for God. You got to be productive. And the only way you can be productive, you got to find out why God created you. Why did God make you, allow you to escape? Why come that bullet didn't kill you? Why come you didn't OD? Why come, my God, you made it out? Think about all the babies that's not making it out. Why are you here at this time? It's a purpose and a reason why you're here at this time. February, what, 3rd, 2019. Find out why you're here. Find out why God left you, because it's for a purpose. According to James, chapter 2 says, my God, uh, uh, chapter 2, 17 through 18 says, so you see faith by itself isn't enough. Uh, it's not enough just to say you got faith, James says. He said, unless it produces good deeds, uh, it is dead and useless. You got faith in God, but what the fruit at? Christians, we say we Christians, where's the evidence at? Faith is also an action word. Faith is very progressive. We serve a progressive God. Our God ain't sitting still, baby. Our God is moving. And so if you got real genuine faith, oh, Keisha, I'm loaded, daughter. My God, if you got real genuine faith, it should be moving you, my God. You shouldn't be comfortable just sitting because if you got real faith and your faith is alive, it's hard to sit still. It's hard, my God, to be around people in society, baby, and not willing to tell them about Jesus. It's hard not to show somebody some love if you got God faith. Come on, somebody. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Uh, James said right there, let me, let me, let me help some of y'all. Because see, you talking about you got faith, my God, but you ain't got no evidence that you got faith. Uh, you talking about you got faith. I believe in God, 
Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Let me tell you what that means. My God, it says you never became intimate with me. You went to church, but you never got intimate with me, the God who died for the church. Yeah, intimacy, depart from me, you workers, those who never gave me their heart. Those who never stopped co habitually committing sin. Those who always chose to do what they want to do, how they want to do it, when they want to do it. My God, depart from me those who will not release the absolute control that I've been teaching. Some of us as Christians, but we got absolute control over what we will do and what we won't do. We tell God, I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. You know why? Because we vote by our attendance. We vote by our giving. When you don't do what God tells you to do, my God, that is absolute control. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God, I need you to help me. I need you to save my children. I need you to bless me. God said, you got way too much control. Your will. You got to get to the point, and I got to get to the point where you get nevertheless. Yeah. Not my yeah. will, but thy will yeah. be done. So James said, my God, you talking about you got faith? Show me. You talking about you going home for Christ? Show me. Going home for Christ is not just a name. Going home for Christ is a lifestyle. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. It ain't rah, rah, rah. It ain't about speaking no tongues. It ain't about preaching loud and preaching hard. It's about your walk. It's about what you, my God, your evidence outside of the four walls, baby. Let me give y'all understanding of what this name is right here. It's about your lifestyle outside of the four walls. Ain't got nothing to do with no preaching. Ain't got nothing to do with no shouting. Ain't got to do with no tongue. What you living, baby? Show me your faith by what you do, not by what you say, baby. That's what going on for Christ. It's a lifestyle. Somebody say lifestyle. Lifestyle. But see, the church don't want that today. That's why we go run and sit, my God, places, my God, where we're not being commanded, my God, nor provoked, my God, to do anything but come to church. Coming to church don't mean you're productive. I want you productive so that you can advance God's kingdom. So James says, show me your faith by your works. Now, works don't get you to heaven, but true works will follow true faith. I'm going to leave it right there. And some of you may argue. Some people have faith. We say this, James said. Others have good deeds. Well, I'm with James. If you got faith, you're going to have good deeds. I don't believe you're going to be doing good deeds without no faith. You ain't just doing stuff for the sake of doing it. If you're doing it, you usually need God to do something for you. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And so, therefore, if you're doing some things, my God, you're expecting something back in return. Is that anybody other than me? Is that anybody other than me? I, I need God to do some things. So, therefore, there is some things that I'm doing because I need God to do what he got to do. God told me to do his part, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to do my part because I need God to show up, my God. He told me if I serve him, my God, everything connected to me, all of it going to be serving, my God. He told me in his word that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, I shall be saved and everything connected to me. I got people out there that son say, I got a song that needs to come in. And so I got to do my part because my baby's got to come on in. Yeah, you got to put in some work, baby. It ain't just enough to believe God. It ain't just enough to pray, you got to have some action behind your prayer, baby. You got to have some ah, obedience behind your prayer. You got to have some submission behind your prayer. You got to have your heart right and your mind fixed, my God. And set on God. You got to be persuaded, my God, so God can do what he need to do. The blessing is in remembrance. Obedience is better than the sacrifice. You can't just beg God for everything and think you ain't got to do nothing. The devil is a lie. You better ask somebody going home for Christ. Give God a hand. <laughs> oh, my God. Everybody wants something, but you don't want to do nothing. The devil is a lie. Oh, my God. James said, how can, I, he said how, how can you show me your faith if you have no good deeds? Some people are not going to believe because you got faith. You say you got faith. They're going to believe by what they see you do. It's principles. Are you with me so far? Uh, James said, I will show you my faith by my good deeds. My God, we have people in place. Uh, God set it up real cold, Pastor Dean. He put the fivefold ministry in place to effect the saints uh, to do the work of the ministry. That's what fivefold ministry consists of. It's my job to equip you to go out and affect my God, God's kingdom. And to help God's church. Are you with me so far? And so God has put people in your life like pastors, teachers. He has gave you the Bible. That's why you got to read it. That's why you got to read it. I'm a dinosaur. I know many of these new modern and millennials preach from the iPads and all that, that's fine. But I like to flip these pages. Come on, somebody. And so therefore, but in order to be effective and be productive for God, in order for your faith, my God, to work, you're going to have to read God's word. I promise you, what you have learned when you first got saved ain't enough to activate your faith. Some of our faith is not activated. You got to feed your faith, baby. 
You got to feed your faith like you feed yourself. My God, they're going to eat wings and all that stuff for the Super Bowl. You got to feed your faith to keep your faith alive and active. If you're not flipping these pages and reading, my God, I promise you, you'll find yourself back doing some of the things that God once delivered you from. You'll find yourself returning back to your vomit like a dog. You'll find yourself in somebody else's spot. I can't get nobody to say nothing if you ain't feeding your faith. Faith will keep you. Faith will anchor you. Faith will save you. My God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You got to read your Bible. You got to submit to your pastors. God has put people in place, my God. If your pastor, my God, is living something, my God, if your pastors are, are living something, my God, to do yourself well to submit to authority. And then you got to also use the teachers that God has put in your life. And also, you got to use the Bible, as I told you, and you got to allow the most important of all those is the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost, baby. That's why I told him to go up into the room and wait there for, my God, till I come. My God, and then you be endued with power. You need power to walk this walk. You need power, my God, to overcome, my God. Oh, it takes the Holy Ghost to help you overcome hangups and habits, baby. It takes the Holy Spirit, my God, Barry, to help you forgive, my God. It takes the Holy Spirit, my God, to help you say no, my God. When you want to answer the phone, but your flesh say yes, answer, but your spirit say no, don't answer it. Oh, my God, I promise you, my God, many of you got delivered from marijuana now it's legal my God I know you're in a war it's all good you better trust the Holy Ghost <laughs> don't start trying to justify and say it's legal now the devil is alive or you're going to find yourself strung out somewhere <laughs> oh my God just Paul said everything is permissible but everything ain't beneficial baby if you know you're an addict you better stay away from that legal mess if you know you're an alcoholic my God a former alcoholic you better get away from it I don't care what's legal this cause it's legal in the natural don't mean it's legal in the spirit I can't get nobody to say nothing you know you can't handle it <laughs> hey my God you can't handle it if you can't handle it, stay away from it. Oh my God, just cause she can handle it, don't mean you can handle it. Just cause they can handle it, don't mean you can handle it. You better know yourself, my God, and quit following people and start following God. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Mm, Jesus. I can't even get out for point number one. Just full of the word. Let's go on to point number two. I ain't gonna get stuck. Uh, let's look at uh, the, the, uh, uh, ants, my God, because they're productive. They labor according to their own ability. Uh oh, let me help you. Uh, ants, my God, Luanya labor according to their own ability. And so you have a volunteer team, and now we're going to deal with people laboring according to their own ability. Each job in the church is important. You need to understand that. Let's look at your name and say, it's important. You are important to God's work and to the work of this church. I need y'all to understand that. That's major stuff transpiring in the spirit realm that will begin to show up in the up and coming weeks in the natural realm. You got to understand that you are important. You being here is important. Your labor here is important. Your sowing here is important. Your praying here is important. You coming out and supporting the work and the move of God in this church is important. Quit telling yourself, because there's a couple of hundred people off in this church, my God, that you don't matter. You do matter. The Bible says the hers on your head is numbered. Think about all the her for those that still, us that still. I got a little bit, don't me and Pastor Tim. Uh, but your hers is numbered. Uh, a sparrow what is it, can't fall to the ground and he not know it. Quit telling yourself you don't matter. That's a, I'm, I'm going to say this, that is a welfare mentality. Because you do matter. You matter to me, you matter to my wife, and you matter to this church. And more important than that, Minister Oliver, you matter to God. If you didn't, you'd have died a long time ago. If you didn't matter, God would have allowed you to die a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It is common for newly, watch this. Here, I'm going back to my, my ant colony. My God, because remember we talking about they, they labor according to their ability. It is common for newly emerged workers, talking about ants, to remain in the nest and tend the eggs. As the workers grow, talking about ants, uh, but I'm going to wait. Uh, we ants right now. Come on, somebody. That's all right. We small, but we multiplying. I promise you. My God. Oh, my God. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I prophesied that. It hit my soul right there. I better bring that back in right there. Uh, my God. But as they grow and mature, my God, ants in the colony, they may shift their activities. As you grow, you start out one work, one place operating and helping the church in one area. But as you begin to grow, God begin to promote you. 
God begin to shift you and move you. That's why the Bible says God shows himself faithful to those who are faithful, but also my God. That's why God said don't despise small beginnings. These men standing up here, they're not trying to be cool. They safeguard in the body. These women that are serving you, if you need a tissue or whatever, these women that stay job to serve you. My God, I trust you. There's many eyes on this church. My God, there's many eyes watching. There's people looking up and walking around, watching all the kids and all. There's a lot going on right there. Come on, somebody. So you got to understand that you matter, as I just said, my God. But as you grow, your responsibilities begin to shift. Some of us want something that we ain't ready to handle. Oh, my God. And God loves you. And I am guilty because I have allowed some people to do things and they wasn't ready. So I had to repent. I had to repent. Because you're available, I've learned, my God, that you have to be called, appointed, and anointed. In this next season, it's be called, appointed, and anointed. Oh, my God. And those words, my God, oh, is in the spiritual realm. My God, called, appointed, and anointed. I have to know. I have to know. I have to know. And so just because you got a lot of abilities don't mean you call appointed and anointed. Let me help you because if you call appointed and anointed, my God, you're going to bring your mission up under this mission and then you're going to birth your mission from this mission. You bring your mission, Pastor, up under this mission and birth your mission from this mission. Oh, my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing. That was heavy right there, Barry. Oh, my God. So, so therefore, as you begin to grow, your activities, your involvement, my God, even in the ant colony, their involvements, my God, begin to shift. My God, away from tending and begin to undertake a nest. And so, my God, some ants, my God, they start off just tending, taking care of the colony. But as they begin to grow and get strong and healthier and somewhat bigger, now they get to come up out of the colony, up out of the ground, up out of the hole, up out of the nest, whatever you want to put on it. And then they venture away. And then they start going making their own colony. Are y'all with me so far? For a season, they was taking care of the colony. Right. As they got stronger and healthier, now they get to come up out of the colony, the hole, and go and produce at a greater level. Yeah. Are y'all with me so far? Yeah. Don't get out your colony before your time. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get out and get ahead of God before your time. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, you mentoring somebody, they said, girl, you ought to go start your church. Man, you a preacher. Well, they told me that too, but I waited. See, I'm trying to say, don't get ahead of God. Don't get out your colony before right. too early. Then you kill yourself. And you go try to undertake a work that destroy you when it should have blessed you, but you got ahead of yourself. Right. Yeah, yeah, don't start your business too soon. Make sure it's timely. Yeah. See, I'm trying to say? Yeah. Make sure you're going back to school at the right time so your kids don't get exposed to something while you're doing all these things. Come on, somebody. Everything is timing. Everything is rhythm. Everything is timing. Everything is rhythm. And God, just because you can don't mean you're supposed to. I teach y'all that now. See what I'm trying to say? And so, therefore, they begin to shift. Uh, and, uh, you got some ants, my God, their purpose is, is the construction. The construction of the, uh, of the colony. They take care of the construction. Uh, you got those that has the microphone. You got those that's vacuuming, those that's serving, those that's doing first-time guests. You got many different construction going on in the body of Christ. Mm, come on, somebody. Some workers may perform the same activities. Watch this, y'all. In the colony as well as in the church. My God, the same activities throughout their lives. And in other cases, workers, ants, as well as in the body, may undertake many other activities of the colony. At any given time, they can perform any given activity for a season before switching to another. So God would have you working in the body of Christ for a season, and then God say, Lisa, shift. Here's where we get stuck at. Because we're not spending enough time in his presence. When your conscience gets seared, because your conscience calls you to hear from the Holy Spirit. Your mind gives you reason. Your feeling deals with the, your body deals with feeling. Sometimes many people have made major mistakes off of feelings. And then, my God, when your, when your feeling flesh, my God, is controlling your reason, mind, now you didn't get, now you all out of whack. That's why your, your conscience got to be submitted, my God, to the Holy Spirit so you can know when to shift. Because many people have shifted, my God, out of flesh and frustration and not out of purpose and destiny. Are you with me? Come on, somebody. And so you can hold a position in the body of Christ. Oh, this is heavy, my God, for a season. And when God says shift, be ready to shift. That's why you can't get too familiar. You should want to, if you feel like you're called to ministry, you should want to learn all aspects of ministry. Yeah, I worked with the kids before at Greenwood. I poured it. I did it all. My God, everything that got to do with ministry, my God, I did it all. You got to be willing. If you called to ministry and you won't work with kids, but you say you called to the ministry, I question are you really called. Because if you are really called, my God, and you're trying to learn and grow in ministry, you want to learn every aspect of it is to ministry. See, I'm trying to say so you can be sensitive to the people that's working. If you ain't never worked there, you won't understand what they're going through. I can't get them right. 
If you ain't never served with game time, you ain't gonna understand what these teachers go through. Oh my God, if you ain't never got her early, had to stay late, my God, from port and greeting, yeah. you won't understand the work, my God, that gotta go into this construction of this That's body. Right. You, are, you become insensitive because you ain't doing nothing. You ain't touched by nobody else's infirmities and, and the workload because you ain't doing nothing. And so, therefore, you complain about a body that's making sure you're at peace, that you got air conditioner, that you got clean bathrooms. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you ain't doing that, so you devalue the construction workers in the body of going over Christ Church that's building this ministry. Mm. As I said, you got to know when to shift. God will shift you as you begin to grow. 2 Peter 3.18, write it down. It says, rather you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's something, Minister Tony, another transparent moment for me. I'm learning to grow in the grace. Uh, I'm not as hard and unyielding. And it's patient with people as I once was. Uh, my baby even told me, you're getting better. She, she ain't gonna get, you're getting better. He's getting better. That's how he's getting better. I didn't say you was doing outstanding, but you're getting better. But see, the Bible said you got to grow in the grace of God. See, growing in the grace of God is, you know, ooh, she la la bo, she ki la 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 basha. Growing in the grace of God means that you become more concerned about other people. That you touch by other people's pain and hurt. That you become more understanding more loving, more compassionate when it comes to the people that's hurting. Everybody ain't going to go hard. Everybody ain't going to keep it on a dollar for 20 plus years like you have, Jew. So therefore, you have to be patient with people. People are going to stumble and fall and have major setbacks in their walk. That don't mean they're not valuable. That don't mean they're not trying. Oh, my God, many, many years ago, my God, I wasn't this person that I'm talking about right now. But you got to grow in the grace of God. When you're growing in the grace of God, then you'll be touched. When you start growing in the grace of God, you start realizing God forgave me, so I got to forgive. God gave me a second and third and fourth chance, so I need to give that person a second and third and fourth chance. That's how you know you're growing, when you start loving what God loves and hate what God hates. When you start being concerned, yeah, God got some hate that means love less. That's what that hate means. Don't mean God ain't hate, a God of hate, you got a love, but you got to love less. My God, there's some things that you should be loving less. When you're growing in God, that stuff that used to satisfy you shouldn't be satisfying you if you're growing in the grace of God. That anger, that bitterness, my God, if you're growing and spending time with God, my God, it should get a little bit easier. Those burdens that you're carrying should get a little bit lighter. How y'all, who my God? God, who am I talking to in the church? Somebody give God a hand. This is heavy, boy. Oh, my God. Mm. So you got to grow in the grace of God. Oh, my God. God has especially gifted and equipped you for some type of work. Oh, let me get it to you. You've been especially gifted and equipped for some type of work. Everybody matters. Oh, my God. You're called to do something. Uh, even if it ain't nothing, my God, oh, my God, thank you, Lord, I thank you. Uh, uh, the, the, the parts that we see, as I told you, in the body of Christ in the book of 1 Corinthians, even a part of the body, Scooter, that we say, my God, that is less important. Bible says that it is the most important. Oh, y'all miss me. Read 1 Corinthians when we talk about the body, how God put the body. And so, therefore, the parts of the body that we think is less important, God says, see, see God is counterintuitive to your belief and my belief. God says that that what you're saying is not important is the most important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that part of your body that you think is not important is more important than what you do. And so I can't do what I do, young preachers, my God, without the body. I need my porters and greeters, my God, because they know I'm not settled until everything is settled. See, if I get the nods and stuff like that, they, they, when you see if I say, come on, I can't give them, no, I got to go, you know, they don't, they don't, I can't give them a sign, come on, somebody. But when I look, my God, when they, when, when they give me my nod, I'm settled, Brandon, then I can do what I'm called to do. It takes everybody in this church for me to be able to do what I'm called to do. If the atmosphere, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost, Mother Morgan, here I come. My God, if the atmosphere, don't you know the Holy Spirit won't show up in any type of atmosphere? Yeah. You got to create an atmosphere for God. Oh, my God, Tony. <laughs> oh, you got to create an atmosphere. Oh, my God. This because you come to church and you're a believer don't mean that God is here. Don't you know you can have a community of believers like this and the atmosphere be so chaotic and so demonic and the spirit of God say, oh, no, 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 I can't touch that. And so the Holy Spirit will be on the outside and you see all this whole emotion and clapping. God say, I ain't in none of that. <laughs> or oh, it's a whole lot of emotionalism. I ain't in none of that. Because when the Holy Spirit come up, conviction take place. People come to the altar and cry out to the Lord. Oh, my God. My God, when the Holy Spirit shows up and hit the body of Christ, my God, people will come down and say, what must I do to be saved? I 
ain't waiting on the altar, my God. I'm coming to give my life to Christ now. Oh, my God, I'm talking about when the Holy Spirit come up. But you got to create an atmosphere. I said you got to create an atmosphere. That's inside the body, but how about your home? What is your atmosphere at your crib like? Come on. What is your atmosphere at the house like? You got to invite the Holy Spirit, my God. You can go off into your son's room or your daughter's room, and you can speak all that mess, my God, but all that old mess going on in your house, you got to create an atmosphere. I told y'all to open up your windows, even though it's cold, and tell them spirits to get up at your house. Tell that division to get up at your house. Tell that addiction to get up at your house. And then you command your son and you command your daughter to live, my God. But you got to clean it up first. Then you got to invite the Holy Spirit in. Clean up your house first and then invite the Holy Spirit in. You got to clean it up first. You got to clean it up first. You got to clean it up. That's why you got to have structure. That's why, by my God, uh, God, God told his, David to tell his son, my God, my God, to make sure you build, my God, the temple according to the pattern. The pattern. Don't build it according to your belief. Believe it, believe, but build it according to the pattern that I've shown you. Yeah. Quit trying to do things according to your, your off a night mind. Yeah. Build it the way God said build it. Yeah. And I'm talking to myself on that one. Build it and do what God told you to do. Yeah. 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 And there's going to be some people that's not going to like the way God told you to build it, but you build it according to the pattern. He gave specific instruction. Build according to the pattern. The pattern. What pattern? God showed the man of God the pattern. David, my God, build, told uh, uh, Solomon to build the temple according to the pattern. Are you building against the pattern? Think about that principle. Are you building against the pattern? Are you going against what God told you and showed you to do? God showed some of you what your life is supposed to look like, but it scared you. You disqualified yourself because you let your environment speak more than the principles of God. You told yourself, how can I? I'm disqualified. They're going to laugh at me. Uh, they're going to they gonna, they, they gonna talk about me. I'm not educated. Uh, they're going to say stuff about me. See, you go, you're reasoning all in your mind. And then you start trying to build something to God a different way. You, that's called offering strange fire. We start offering strange worship to God. Strange fire to God. Because we let fear, uh, low self-esteem, we let our environment, we let what people say speak louder than what God say. Some of us can't move forward because people's voices, what they said, you're sorry like your mama, you're sorry like your daddy, you ain't going to never be nothing. Teacher said bad stuff about you. You got all that stuff going on in your mind. And when you read the word of God, and the Bible says in Philippians, you can do all things. And greater is he that is in you than he's in the world. Oh my God, if God be for you, who could be against you? Oh my God, when you hear those scriptures right there, it don't resonate with you because your mind is so cloudy. Your mind is so confused, my God. You believe man's report over God's report, and you won't do what God told you to do, and you start trying to build stuff in the flesh instead of building in the spirit. Who am I talking to in the church, my God? Who I'm too heavy. Oh, somebody give God a hand in the church, my God. Oh! Jesus! See, we passed Egypt. We passed talking about the club and cigarettes and, and alcohol. You got to come on up, baby. Somebody give God a hand in the church, man. Oh. I don't want to talk about the clubs no more. I don't want to talk about you sleeping around no more. I want you to soar. I want you to go to the next level. Oh. 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 Mm. Mm. God has gifted you. God has gifted you. Look at your neighbor and say, God has gifted me. Ooh, my God. The ants, the ants, the ants. Oh, my God. The ants can't build a wall, y'all, but they can build anthills. Stay with me. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. The ants can't build a wall, but they can build an anthill. Watch the simplicity of this. God's not going to ask you to do something that you can't do. So why are you scared? Why are you scared? Because you don't have real faith like you say you got faith. You don't believe God nor trust God like you say that you do. Because if you did, you'll get out the boat and walk on water. See, if, the, if you really trust God and you know God ain't going to do nothing to hurt you, my God, you'll get out there. Oh, they all going to laugh at me. So what? They laughed and talked about Jesus. But look at them today. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. People going to laugh at you. That's okay. That's okay. It's good to be on public trial. Because when God turns it around, the same people that's laughing, you got to come down and bow to you. It, 
I said the same people that left there, you know, they're coming down bow. Hey, Pastor Jew, I did oh, yeah, yeah, now they got to bow in honor to the king. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there, baby. I said the same people that left there, you know, they got to honor you. Oh, my God, I can't get no, let them laugh at you. Let them talk about you. Let them count you out, baby. Sooner or later, God said, I'll make your enemies be at peace. I'll bring them back around, they'll be honoring you. They'll be honoring you. They'll be honoring you. Oh, my God. Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let them laugh. Quit disqualifying yourself because you think people are going to look at you and laugh at you. So what? Yeah, my God. Ain't nobody got a heaven and a hell to put you in, baby. Uh, they, so, so ants build, not walls, but they build ant hills. Let me give you this. And this is what the Lord has designed them to do. He designed them to build ant hills. He didn't design them to build a wall. If, watch this. If you're trying to do something, you're not supposed to be doing, you're going to be frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. Another ouch for the young man of God. Yeah. Having people around me doing stuff that they're not qualified to do because their availability. Yeah. That's out the door. Somebody better catch me in the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of us, my God, is frustrated and you're blaming the devil, my God, because you're doing stuff that you weren't qualified to do or you weren't created to do. That's why you got to know your purpose. Coming to listen to your pastor preach don't mean you know your purpose. Yes, we got stuff in place for you to discover that, but you got to discover your purpose. That means you got to spend time with God in private so that you can understand what you're called to do so that you can do what God has called you to do. The late Dr. Miles called it finding your spot. There's a spot that God created just for you. And so when I get in that spot, oh my God, everything that's supposed to come in my life, oh Tony, I'm heavy. Everything that's supposed to happen in my life, oh my God, so is it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Some of us has not found our, see, it's all kind of spots. God is trying, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh my God. See, God is trying to maneuver you. He, he, the Bible says the steps of a good man are directed, ordered by the Lord. See, oh my God, God is trying to re maneuver uh, his sons and daughters. <laughs> oh my God, they got a real yes down in their soul. God is trying to maneuver you to your spot. Because when you get in your spot, <clears throat> once you get to your spot, everything uh, that's supposed to happen in your life <clears throat> will, will meet you at your spot. Oh my God. That's... Oh my God, so, 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 my, ah, uh, see, God loves us so much. God loves us so much, and he said, I'm trying to answer your prayer. I'm trying to do that for you, and I'm trying to move you to your spot, but well, I'm trying to move you, because you, ah, uh, you got too much control, you won't let me get you to your spot. When you get to your spot, everything is supposed to come to you, then you'll be able to say, everything connected to me win, but you can't say that. Oh my God, so you got to quit fighting, and let God move you to your spot. God is trying to position some of you in the body of Christ because when you get to your spot, my God, some of the things you've been believing for, some of the doors that's locked in your life, when you get to your spot, when you own your spot, when you're standing on the square, oh my God, oh my God, when you get to your spot, baby, when you're standing in the square, and we should say in the penitentiary, when you're standing in the square, baby, when you get to your spot, my God, then God can give you everything that you're supposed to have. He can't give it to you till you get to your spot. And that's why many of us are frustrated because we're not in our spot. We're trying to do stuff, my God, that don't consist of my spot. Oh, my God, he got me working there. You got to find your spot. That's why you got to be willing to submit to the God that's on the inside of the man of God when he sees stuff. Pastor, I don't want to go to Mr. Training. You're going. <laughs> Pastor, I don't know if I can preach. You preached. I don't know if I can do it, but you're doing it. What am I trying to say? When you get to your spot, all the stuff that you believe in God to happen in your life, it won't happen till you get in your spot. That's why, my God, that's why you can't, that's why you can't let reason and feelings move you out of purpose and out of time. That's why when everybody else leaves, you stay, because God ain't told you to do nothing. See what I'm trying to say? 
<laughs> See, you going off of your home, girl, because she, she lied on the church out of the body, and now you ready to leave. You taking on her fist, and now you didn't move yourself from your spot. Now you seven more years in famine. You seven more years in Egypt. You seven more years in my... God said, I never told you to leave. I never told you to shield. I never told you to do that. You let your mind, you let your feelings get you out of this purpose. I was moving you towards your spot. <laughs> hey, my God, but then you let something, my God, of flesh get you out of the will of the Father. Now you got seven more years of hell, seven more years of suffering. I was on the verge of saving your marriage. I was on the verge of delivering your children, my God. But you let flesh and reason move you out of your spot. You was on your way. That's why the Bible says, faint not and do season. You shall reap, baby. Some of you faint, my God, and you give it up, my God. But God is trying to get you to your spot. Because when you get to your spot, oh, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. When you get to your spot, you can drive what you want to drive and dress the way you want to dress and spin the way you want to spin. I can't get nobody to say that right there. When you get to your spot, you can work out a lot of suits and fire. When you get to your spot, baby. Oh, yeah, let me get up off the flesh. Let me get up off the flesh. When you get to your spot, then God starts sending you souls that need to be saved. Souls that need to be delivered. Ah, when you get to your spot, he can say, now I can start doing your will in your life. Now I can start blessing you, my God, beyond what you can imagine. When you get to your spot, that's souls. When I got to my spot, you came. The alcohol addiction is gone. Oh, my God. Ah. Holy Ghost. God is trying to move some of you to your spot. You're fighting against your own self. That's why the great TDJ say the enemy in me. We are more of an enemy to ourselves than the devil could ever be. Quit fighting against your spot. I had to go to the penitentiary in a six by nine prison cell. That's the route I had to go to get in my spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. When I got into my spot, people that I tried to kill on the streets when I was gang banging and tried to kill me is now in the church. Yeah. When you get in your spot, that stuff that you believe in God for, that's in his will, will automatically come because it's connected to your spot. What am I trying to say? I don't even mess with it. I'm going to finish up on Wednesday. Thank you, Lord. I'm so full. So full. So full, baby. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Trying to help God's people. Mm. Some of you, when you made your way to this church, get up by sheep kid. Chap, when you made your way to the church, when you made your way to the church, when you made your way to the church, Patrice, where Ronnie at? When you made your way. To the church. Yes, God. Antoinette, when you made your way. Barry, when you made your way. Lawanya, when you made your way. Son, when you made your way, not just to the church, to this spot, this piece of real estate, that's when God started unlocking keys. I mean, doors, opening up doors and closing doors and deliverance and stuff started happening. Oliver. When Margot brought you to me, son, at Greenwood Christian Center said, I know the perfect person that you need to be connected to. At that time, you know what you was doing. Look at you, Oliver, all these years later. Went for making, I'm coming in. Thousands and thousands of dollars a day. When God called him out of that life, he used to fly and traveling and spending thousands and thousands of dollars. He became homeless. He was living in his car, moving around, staying with friends and people. Sometimes he would even come sit with me, come hang out with me and the first lady and so forth. Homeless, because he refused to go back 
and sell dope. He refused. He refused. Even when the phone calls was coming. Even when the homeboys was tempted and said, I got to do is take this pack. I got you, baby. My God. Even though he could make one phone call, my God, and set it all the way off. He was willing to go all the way from the top, all the way back down to the bottom to do God's will in his life. But he had to be connected to somebody that he can respect. I spent hours and hours and days and days with Oliver. Because that's what it took to get him confident enough and strong enough to believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now today he's standing. I even had a key when he stumbled up, I'm going to call it that, on his wife, Tiffany. He's like, Pastor, I need to talk to you. So let me listen to her. Let me see what she's talking about. Let me catch something in the spirit. When I first talked to Tiff, you remember? You remember Tiff? All right. I said, Ooh, Oliver, something about that was right there. I don't know, but it's something about her. Something about her. Now, as I look back, this ain't even in my notes, but now as I look back and everything that y'all have come through, how you stood, Tiff, when I say there's something about her, I didn't know then like I know today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Who got the key to your spot? Who got the keys? your spot who got the keys to your next Krista I seen your post thank you I give God the glory who got the keys you man who's fighting against trying to get fighting against God's will because God's trying to move you and it's uncomfortable and you got a lot of fear you keep disqualifying yourself saying I'm not qualified I can't I don't want to I don't want to forgive him. I don't want to forgive her. If I let go, they win. And God is trying to move you. Because when you get to your spot, you don't have to forgive God to do it for you. That's good. That's good. Lord, have mercy. Who have God brought to the body of Christ? And going off of Christ's church. As Pastor Ron said, God gave me word. He told me to tell the church that I'm going to put it out there. Quit dating the church. Many of you are dating yeah going off of Christ's church. But you can't date God. You can date the church, but you can't date the God who died for the church. Don't date the church. Get in the body. Start working in the body. Start being productive in the body. Why? Because the body, meaning the people that's in her, to your left, your right, and behind you, need you to survive. As I stated, and I'm closing, Next level thinking is a must. Next level thinking is a must. You and I must understand that there are seeds of greatness, seeds of abundance inside of you. And when you get to your spot, the increase, the abundance, the greatness, will begin to happen in your life. In order to get to your spot, you got to be willing to disconnect from people, places, and things that's holding you and interfering with you getting to your spot. When an ant goes out and get food, they will bring the food back to its spot, the colony. They didn't go get the food and eat the food outside of the... Co- See, now they out of position. They got the food and then they brought it back to the colony, to the spot. And let everybody eat. They weren't just concerned about they fall and no more. The little lessons 
that I have learned from the end. We need each other to survive. Your marriage is dying because you won't be transparent. Relationships are affected because you won't be transparent. We are dying in addictions and hangups and habits and depression and oppression, suicide and all of them because we won't come to the body and say, look, I'm hurting, help me. We got trust issues that people that are sitting beside you and around you never cause and you brought them to the church and even if you had some since you've been here, my God, you got to step out sooner or later because those trust issues that you're having is keeping you bound, keeping you locked up. When somebody in this church got a key to help you get free. But because you got a wall of disbelief and lack of trust, you're bound, you're frustrated, and your walk with God is grievous. Because you won't surrender and say, look, help me. Every head bow. Who in here today? Lord, there's so much I can go. Who in here today that never have accepted Jesus? And you say, my God, I wasn't expecting this, but I think I'm ready to get to my spot. You can't get to your spot if you're outside of the will of the Father who created the spot for you. So if you have never, ever accepted Jesus, any of you, and you want to give your life to Christ, please just raise your hand. Thank you for that hand. Who else? You want to give your life to Christ. You're ready to get to your spot. Come on, first time. I want to know for a fact that I got an opportunity to dominate the earth and make it into heaven one day. I'm going to ask the young lady to raise the hand. Please come. Come down. Pastor, get him, bring her down when she comes. Who else? Y'all know we take our time on this right here. Because this is what it's all about. If I be lifted up, today is your day. Choose this day. Choose this day. Who wants to give their life to Christ? Today is your day. Put it right there in the front, Pastor. Who's bold enough to say, you know what? I, I, I thought I was saved. Or I'm thinking I'm saved. Or, but I ain't sure. But today, I want to make sure. If that's you, come on, raise your hand. Is that anybody? If you're on the outside of the Father's will, and you're desperate for your spot, you're desperate to get in position, you're desperate to be reconnected so that you can function in what God created you to do, and you're ready to recommit at a different level, you're ready to go to another level, let me see your hand, let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Uh, if you want to find your spot, listen to me, church. Listen to me. Don't let distractions or movement cause you to miss because you might not never get another chance. If you are ready to meet God and move into your spot, let me see your hand. Come out your seat and come. We're going to pray. The Bible says that those who were sick, lame, and deaf, and mute, and so forth, the Bible says they brought them to Jesus. There's certain things you can't do sitting in your seat. You got to be willing to come. I'm going to ask that you come. We're talking about people that want to find a spot. People that's tired of wandering in the wilderness. Come on this end down here, men of God. Bring them down here. Come on down here. Tired of wandering. Tired of wandering. Want to know for sure. I'm ready to get to my spot. My walk seemed real hard. Leave the lights up. Leave the lights up. Leave the lights up for me. My walk seemed hard. That's good right there. My walk seemed grievous. I'm really frustrated with a lot of stuff. I didn't get out of God's will because I didn't let distractions interfere. Uh, I felt like I was headed towards the right place, but somehow I ended up uh, on the wrong road. My God, if that's you, uh, there's some things, my God, that I got to get up under the blood. I, I've opened myself up, my God, to some situations. Uh, uh, the Bible says, never awaken love, love before it's time. I've opened up some stuff, my God, and done some things that I, that I might not be proud of, my God. Uh, I've exposed myself to stuff that I shouldn't expose myself to. If that's you, my God, come on and come. Come on and come. Come find your spot. Come find your spot. Come on. Let's, let, let God start the process of helping you discover why you are created so that you can really start living. Because you don't live until you get in your spot. 
You just exist. What hang up, what habit that you got? Bring that to if you're struggling with any form of a hang up a habit, any form of addiction. Why don't you come? Any form, peel addiction. What type of demon is on top of you when ain't nobody around? Won't you bring that? Won't you bring that? What's keeping you? What's keeping you? What's keeping you? What's keeping you? What's hindering you this afternoon? I want you free. I want you free. Thank you, Lord. My last call. Depression and oppression. Depression and oppression. If you're feeling oppressed, depressed, if you have suppressed a lot of stuff, is that you this afternoon? You thought you was on the other side of depression, but you, ah, it keeps coming back. Is that you? Oppressed. I got a lot of frustration down in my soul. Is that you? Mm. A lot of frustration. Thank you for those that's coming. Thank you for those that's coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Confused. You know, confusion is an enemy too, y'all. Those that's at the altar, come on, you need to be focused on God. Don't worry about what's going on. Just focus on God. You're here to talk to God. You're not here to talk to me. Don't wait on me. God can do what he got to do while I'm talking. God is focusing on you. You got to set your mind on God. Don't set your mind on who coming and what pastor saying. You need to be up here because you came for you need God to do what you came up here to do. So you need to be praying and say, God, I'm here. I showed up. Let me get to my spot, whatever it is. Save my soul. Heal my mind. Deliver me from whatever it is. Oh, my God. You got to talk to God. I can't do it for you, church. Ah, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You ready to quit? You ready to quit? You know you're ready to quit. 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 You're ready to quit on life. You're ready to quit on your children. You're ready to quit on your grandchildren. You're ready to walk away from a job because it's hard. But God said it ain't time to shift yet. Oh, my God, if that's you, please come. Please come. Please come. Oh, my God, if you're in an abusive relationship, you ought to be up here. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, my God, if your love for God has shifted, if your heart is not right, mm, if you're not in submission to even this pastor as he preaching, you ought to be up at the altar. My God, getting it right because it ain't about you and me. It's about you finding your spot so you can do what God has called you to do. Church, my God, thank you, Lord. 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 Yeah, yeah, It's me, God. It's me, God. I've come, God. It's me, God. Cross my mind over, God. Cross my heart over, God. Heal me, God. Deliver me, God. It's me, Lord. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm ready, God. 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 Thank you, Lord. Come on, Pastor Dean. Come on, Pastor Thank you, Lord. 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 Is anybody else that needs to be here? Who else need to be here? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Pray over the people of God. The woman of God right here want to give her life to Christ. Where she at right here? My God, we're going to deal with her first and then pray over the body. And we're going to release the body, man of God. Man, if you've come today and you want to give your life to Christ, sister, Anybody else, uh, he is available today. He said, whosoever would, let him come. And if we confess our sin, the scripture says in 1 John that he is faithful and fulfilling justice to forgive us 
and to cleanse. That's not an outward cleanse like we talked about Wednesday. It's an inward cleanse. Cleansing from all unrighteousness. Where he, we have missed the mark in our life. And God says, I will make you righteous. I will make you clean. I will restore what the enemy has deceived you into turning to that was counterfeit. And so anybody today that has come and said, I want to give my life 100%. I'm not tip, dipping my toe in the water. I'm coming 10 toes in the game, and I'm going to give it all up for Jesus. I want you to just pray this simple prayer after me. It's a prayer, and then you go from this place, and you live out the prayer. Father God, repeat after me. Father God, I thank you that you sent your son in the flesh over 2,000 years ago to die for me. I thank you that that sacrifice, that shedding of blood, purchased my righteousness, cleansing, holiness, healing, and deliverance. And I thank you today that you're sensitive and you see past my faults and you look right to the core of my need. And God, I thank you today that I receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and Master of my life for the rest of my life as long as I walk the earth. I am yours. I turn away from the devil and I turn away from sin and I turn to you and I receive your love. I receive your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a voice of time. This week's reading in the One Year Bible in Exodus 13, verse 2. Moses was dealing with the Passover and he said, Because of the blood that is upon the doorpost, I have brought you out of Egypt. Many of you, God has brought you out. And as Pastor said, I don't want to talk about clubs and, and sin. I want to talk about getting into purpose. Further down in verse 3, he says, That same blood now causes you to be able to come in to the land that is occupied by the Canaanites and the Jebusites, all the enemies, all the things that are mocking us. Whatever the addiction is, whatever the relationship is, whatever is keeping you from your spot, your land, to possess it in Christ, whatever has deceived you and tricked you from just simply walking into it. And the blood has not only brought you out, but it has given you access to come in. Father, I thank you today before me are believers, before me are members of the body of Christ in good standing. And God, I thank you, not only individually, but I speak prophetically over this church. We're going to begin to walk in to our spot, into the land, into what you have called us to possess in our lives. Come on, begin to pray. Come on, be come on begin to look to the Lord right now. And I thank you, Lord Jesus that all across this room, the spirit of wisdom and revelation is coming. Whatever has been hanging on to you, whatever has been around your neck, whatever has talked you out of the promise of God that is in Christ Jesus, I speak death to it now in the name of Jesus. Young sister, young brother, mom, dad, whoever you are in the church, God is getting ready to catapult us into our next. And I prophesy wisdom. That means you're going to know what to do, not in the church, but when you go home to your address and to begin to make the changes. I'm telling you, some people, you're going to have to stop worrying about what they think about you. You're going to have to cut some things off, clip, clip. And this year, you're going to be able to make the decision not to talk about it in the church, 
not to shout about it, but to actually go home, to go to work, to go to your family, to go to your husband, your wife, and whatever it may be, and to make a decision. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the grace. My God, there are people that are in their 60s and 70s in the room that it's time to get into your spot. There are young people like David was a young man, like Esther was a young woman. It's time for such a time as this. God has brought you and it's time to put your hand to the plow and to begin to work. My God, there are mothers and there are fathers in the church today, and it's time. It's time. I hear the Lord saying, it's time. It's time. It is Kairos. The days are evil. Redeem the time. It's time. Work while it's still day. It's time. For when it's night, no one can work. God has given a door and an opportunity. And let me tell you something, church. We're not going through the door alone. You're not, brother. You're not going through the door alone. Look around you. Everybody in here is struggling with something. You're getting ready to go. That's what the enemy was so scared of. That's why the Canaanites and the Jebusites and all those ites, those demonic, demonic worshipers, they were fearful because they saw this. One can put a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. I'm going to pray and close and release you. Father, I thank you for the word of God that has found its mark in our heart today. I thank you for deliverance. I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for understanding on what we must do, like the ant, to go home and not do what we can't do, but to do what God you said we could do. And I thank you for grace. I speak to every mountain. I speak to every opposing force. And I say we're getting in our spot and we're possessing. We're possessing the promises of God that are yes and amen. People of God, shout to God and begin to make noise and begin to clap your hands. Begin to shout. Begin to bless him. Begin to praise him. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name.